our last episode, we restored the headlamp assemblies, put them back on the car. Today, we're going to go back to that battery tray we restored in episode 15. Um, I got another one. We're going to do a little bit better job on this new incoming one. And we'll get that put in the car. So go brew yourself a cup of joe, or pop open a cold one, and let's talk shop. Thanks to Fritz over at rx7club.com, I've got a new battery tray. Now back in episode 15, I spent some time working on my other battery tray that came with the car and um, I had put it in a blast cabinet. And let me tell you, in a highly corroded item in a blast cabinet, took forever to get clean. Had a whole bunch of pinholes in it by the time I got done with it. I applied POR 15 with a brush so it didn't come out as nice as I wanted it to. So now I've got a new one. I'm going to do a chemical dip on this one so that we've got hopefully a better cleaning process and I will spray the POR 15 with, now that I have a spray gun. Didn't have a spray gun at the time I took care of the last battery tray. Now I do. Gonna spray it on. So thanks Ryan. This is in better shape than the one that came on my car. Um, there's plenty of people out there that were willing to help me out getting a new tray, but um, you know most of the trays out there are 72, 73, 74 different tray. Well, you know, the bolt pattern is the same. It'll still hold the battery, but the 76 has the three holes and I was kind of trying to maintain that look. So, been holding out for a 76. Gonna start chemical dip on this here battery tray. So thanks to a guy named DJ Mitsu at rx7club.com. He had mentioned using Evapo Rust when he was restoring his fuel tank for his Mazda Cosmo. So I'm checking it out, seeing what it'll do for me. You know, just yesterday, these two brake rotors were the same. You know, and look at all that rust caked up on. No scrubbing required. Just gonna cover the top of the tray here. Well, actually the bottom of the tray, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna give that 24 hours and then I'm going to turn it on in so that the foot can get, or the, you know, the, so the foot can soak. All right, let's see what we got here. Wow. Yeah, that's looking good. It is looking good. Turning this around in the black Evapo Rust. Didn't expect much because when Evapo Rust turns black, it's pretty much spent. Yeah, you can still see some residual discoloration there rather than bare metal. But for the most part, it's going to be okay. And the reason I'm good with this is because I'm going to use POR15 silver, right? And in order to do that, I got to hit it with the metal prep. And the metal prep is going to take off any last bits of, like there's some paint residue there and some minor rusting there. I'm okay with it. I did eke out a little bit more from this spent evapo rust. Okay, tending to the new battery tray here. Doing the metal prep. Metal prep should be done between 65 and 90 degrees. And we're looking at about 69, so we're okay. Okay, it's almost two o'clock. Wind's kicking up. I gotta get this thing going before it gets too windy here. POR 15 should be stirred, never shaken. There's sediment at the bottom and particles that need to be mixed up within it. POR 15 is pretty thick stuff. It needs to be thinned. Use only POR15 solvent. Yeah, I'm starting to sound like a commercial. I did look for thinning directions on their website. It said, thin to desired consistency. It's got two good coats. I got a little bit of paint left in this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit it with a third coat. Two solid coats, a little bit of a third. As I was spraying a little bit of that third on, I noticed some dripping, so stopped. Okay, one on the left. Yeah, the one on the left with all the pinholes and brush strokes. Old one. One on the right with only 
Yeah, see, I got a little bit of too much paint, so there's some dripping going on. You know, ultimately, the battery sits right there. Nobody will see it, except for the thousands of people that watch these videos. See the old one? There's all them pinholes. Lots of pinholes there. So this newer one only has, like, maybe five, half a dozen pinholes. Yeah, see, only a couple. Like four, five. There's five there. Nothing on the main shell. Yeah, darn it. When I went to put that third coat of POR 15 on just to use up what was left, that's when all this dripping started. Should have just uh, sat still with two coats. Would have been good. Oh well, won't be visible. We're good. Coming up next, hood release cables. We're going to look at the difference between the 74 cable, the 76, and the knockoffs coming out of Thailand. Click our icon to subscribe and don't miss out on our upcoming videos. Peace out, brother.